So, welcome Rachel, chef, proprietor, farmer, and Jose, long time uh, fan of the podcast, The Deer Cast. You very kindly uh, not only had us uh, come on the podcast before, but you've actually put us in touch with other guests like Rachel as well. So we're forever in your in your debt. Um, for those of you that haven't seen uh, Jose's book, uh, The Game Lot, you need to go out and get it. Um, it's a staple on my my Rachel's book. in it. Rachel's yeah, in it. Oh, really? she's so, in it. So yes, one of one yeah, one of yeah, the I mean, I was very honoured to be asked, obviously. So. Yeah. Uh, and it's a fantastic book. I mean, just so it's really it's a story as yeah. well as it has some recipes in it. Obviously, mm-hmm. there's a lot of lovely chefs in there. I feel very honoured. But it's a story about the whole process of stalking to the plate. Um, yeah. It's phenomenal, as are the pictures taken by the lovely Steve Lee. So I I made the cardinal sin of when we were recording our last podcast with Jose. I referred to it as a recipe book. <laughs> I was sure Jose was just going to go click the button and end the podcast. I was like, I'm sorry. We, 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 yeah, when we, when we did it then, so I, mean, we, we, I say it, and Rachel says it, and other people say it, it's not a recipe book. And we say to people, please, please don't mm. read it as a recipe book. It's a yeah. book. Yeah. And you read the story, and then afterwards, then go and look at the recipes. But for anybody, just to be able to, even if people that have nothing to do with stalking, it's one of those books I think that you can give to them and say, have a look at that, and yeah. give you a better understanding of what we yeah. know. It's a sort of journey, isn't it? From yeah, like, yeah, yeah it's really, really and the it's sauce. everything that this, that we're yeah. here at the stalking show, yeah. is about. Yeah. And, and so also, you based your kind of demos on that, yeah. you know, uh, on the book. So, so everything that Jose's saying within his demos, if you can't yeah. pick it up in time, yeah. Um, it's there in black yeah, and white, and I think yeah. I mean, yesterday when I mentioned it, had so many sales, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Really well, because yeah, people sure. are so impressed with it. Yeah. It's brilliant. So I'm pushing him to write the, the third one. <laughs> well, yeah. And what an incredible segue into where we are today, why you're both here, what you're doing here, because obviously we're here at the stalking show. For those of you that are listening and can't see where we are, and for those of you in video who can't can't see where we are in this glamorous cave. Um, <laughs> so the stalking show, what? I don't well, think Rachel, what you're both doing here. Yeah, well, I know well, what's what's Rachel, Rachel basically is the one that put me in touch with them. I mean, I'd seen it advertised, but when, when they did a thing in Scotland, yeah. and then it came down here, and Rachel basically spoke to um, to uh, David. Yeah. I was introduced to him yeah. by I Love Food, actually, who from yeah. the theatre <clears> one today. Um, and they said, and he said to me, Rachel, he said, I hear that you can organise the kitchen for me. You know, can you organise the chefs? And I, I said, there's just one man you need. And I said, it will make it all. I said, <laughs> yeah. he's my dearest friend. And I said, yeah. total expert. And we do this show together. And we've, we've done it for many years now. 17, 18, maybe 20 years. I mean, I shouldn't say that, but a long time. And, it's just this, and I said, you need her way. So I, I, organize, I do put the kitchen together, but obviously Jose now is helping me with it. And we just try and just put on things, that, particularly here at the stalking show, it isn't necessarily about the cooking. We do do, the, and I do cook the carcass as Jose is breaking it down, but it is, it's not about that, it's about the journey, and, and here at the stalking show, people want to see the butchery, don't they, Jose? Yeah, yeah, I want to see basically, More than it. Cooking. Yeah, you've got yeah. a lot of guys that basically stalk at home that have, don't necessarily have an idea how to break it down, or mm-hmm. they'll look at the, the pages of the book and they're still not quite sure, even though, when we took the photographs of the book, we took it from a point of view, so basically yeah, looking yeah, yeah. straight down it. A lot of other books, they do it the other way. Yeah. They take the picture of what you're doing, and it's sort of a bit skewy. Right, right, yeah. So they come to look and to see how you're doing it, and they'll come up and ask you questions about what you're doing, how you're doing it. And we try to do it as simply as possible. Even with friend Rage is cooking some of the, the meat. I mean, last night we cooked some venison, uh, little medallions of venison that we cooked, and people come out and eat it, and they'll go, oh, I've got it, so they good, what have you done to it? And we've seen it. I've seen nothing, we've seen it. And we put it in some really nice butter and oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, it speaks for itself. Was that got, what got passed around? Yes, yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, that was amazing. Oh, yeah. That was, yeah. yeah. Season, but that was probably yeah. um, Treated it's, in the right way. It's it's a, the good British part of yeah. British venison. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what it's it was, all about. It was um, you had fallow last night, so um, was it? it was. I was really yeah. wondering what it was. Yeah, yeah. and it was, and, and also you know, Jose is so incredibly technically good because not only is he passionate and, and stalks as much as he possibly can on some really great land, mm. but he teaches it. So with Jose's demos, he actually is is much more 
intricate mm. than any other person I've ever seen do it. Mm. And I think that is his unique selling point for me. And that's why I'm so proud to, to hang along and tag along with him. <laughs> the old stag. The old stag. I mean, the, 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 when we try, what we try to do here, we do. Work the dance, together, we we? do. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's always, when we try to do stuff, it's basically, I'm breaking down the carcass. Rachel will start cooking recipes. And the whole idea of making some of the recipes is that we put some bit of spices and stuff with it, but to try to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. And I think when Rach basically, the fact that I'm breaking down, she can cook it so quickly and put it out to people. Yeah. yeah and then people go, oh, I can do that. I can, I, you know, people don't be scared of doing it. They don't feel threatened by it, you know, yeah. they, they, they feel they're it's achieved. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I'm not a chef by any stretch of the imagination. And so when I look at recipes and I'm like, oh my God, like it's Lame. four pages yeah. long, yeah. you need yeah. a list of ingredients you've got to go and find from we'll four, four, four times the earth. Yeah. Like, yeah. No. You know, at the moment, obviously, um, wild garlic's around. So, yeah. and we've got some, um, we've, we've got some um, wild garlic pesto with us. We've got some wild garlic oil. They're just cooking it off. Salt, some really great sea salt. No, no not horrible mm. cheap. Nice salt, um, and and literally a few herbs and a little bit of lemon on it, maybe, and then just a little bit of squirt well, of garlic. Wild garlic pesto is just like it well, just well, is garlic. amazing. We, yeah. So we actually have actually get asked this, uh, this talking yeah. show for a recipe for wild pesto garlic. Oh, yeah. So what what would you if someone was going to go out and make it? Um, well, one we've got there um, is pine nuts. We yep. toast the pine nuts, but it's important when you toast the pine nuts that you let them go cold. Don't yeah. don't try and toast them while they're warm. Then make the pesto because it will take them, everything will go brown colour. Um, so you toast the pine nuts, um, and then just let them go cold. And then you've got uh, equal quantities of basically the wild garlic, which takes stems off, mm-hmm. and the um, and oil. Um, you normally I use basically a sort of not a virgin olive oil. I'll use a medium olive oil. So uh, yeah, it doesn't want to be too, oil, it doesn't no. want to be green and fruity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, no. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it takes away, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. And then probably mm-hmm. one or two garlic cloves, uh, some lemon zest, a little bit of lemon uh, lemon oil, and uh, just a bit of seasoning, and then um, parmesan, uh, grated parmesan. But some decent and, uh, parmesan. Creamy, yeah. Grate it freshly, not yeah. the powdered no, stuff. No powdered stuff. Yeah. No fresh. Not not pre grated. It's yeah. got to be. The other thing about wild garlic is that it sh- you shouldn't really pick it when it's flowering because it's mu- it goes, starts to go very, very bitter. Yeah. It has a really kind of strong, bitter taste in your mouth. It, you're beginning to, you're beginning to get past it, you're on that yeah. edge. So we're beginning to get on that edge. Yeah. I mean, if you find a kind of very shaded part in a woodland, you'll, you'll, it'll still be okay at the moment, but it's starting to go, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, about yeah. right yeah. now. It's yeah. small leaves you want, isn't it? The yeah, and fresh without fresh. the flower coming out, yeah. yeah. I, I'll, I'll use either, I'll use big leaves, but I mean, I'll be, no, when I, I when I went, because I went to Lorcan on Tuesday, and I shot two deer on Tuesday, and then I collected two big bags of it, and the two, I bought some here, I made the pesto, I made the oil as well. Yes. So the oil, is a little bit different, so the oil, what you do is you blanch the leaves, yeah. uh, in boiling salted water, yeah. for one minute, take them out, put them in ice cold water. Straight into ice cold, yeah. And then you let them drain a little bit, and then put them into a liquidizer with the oil, and normally about 200 grams, well, about 300 grams of leaves to about uh, 300 grams of oil, and you just add the oil to it, and then whiz it up, and then keep whizzing it up, and then you put it into a muslin cloth and tie it up at the top, and just let it overnight just tie it on something yeah. where it can hang, and then drip through. You don't force it through, just let it drip through. And then it'll become, it's very clear then, if you force it through, it'll become cloudy yeah. uh, and quite strong as well, so, and you get this lovely little kind of color. It looks like a uh, wash up liquid, I mean, that, yeah. that's that kind yeah. of like smell. Certain brands we know. Yeah, so. Really, really fantastic yeah. smell, so. Yeah. And, it, and that is help. simple because really that a lot of the deer will be eating that. So yeah. it, again, we, Jose and I are very keen on the fact that, you know, a lot of, a lot of restaurants, a lot of chefs don't, aren't specific on their menus about mm. what kind of deer they're serving. They're also, yeah. we're anti juno aren't we? The parent, <laughs> <laughs> because, we've heard about that. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, <laughs> and certain things, certain ingredients, with certain types and species of deer yeah. react badly. Like fallow, not, doesn't really like red wine very much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I don't well, either, that's so. used to me, like, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm very keen on, I'm not really a gravy person, so I yeah. love the kind of, the certain things, like I love tagines, and I like that kind yeah. of, Middle yeah. Eastern flavors work really well with it, as do Oriental flavors, so. Um, but you don't need to drown anything, do you? It's the venison, that's, that's the king, yeah. the dish, yeah. you know, the queen of the dish, whatever. So, yesterday and today, stalking show, Butchery demonstrations. Yesterday, you did. Uh, we did a fallow, uh, a fallow deer, uh, which yeah. we basically skinned, or we took it all the way from 
basically feel to fork if you like. We're yeah. talking about anything from shop placement right through to bleeding, working, and fridge temperatures and basically fridge protocols for that. And then we broke it down, rage coat, uh, loin, and you've got some parbase. Yes. Um, and we did, uh, what was it, I can't remember what else we did. Loins, parbase. Um, that was it, wasn't it? Like yeah, I think And then that was it. And then, yeah, then we did, um, in the quick bits, day, quick, mm. yeah. 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 In the second day, we had a, a small wild boar carcass, which has been cut in half, just a half of wild boar. Yeah. And uh, I cut it into showing all the different segments of basically how you break it down. And then yeah. Rage could uh, loin. Um, yeah. And then you've done the, some... Um, shoulder, I did a slow cook shoulder, which I did in like a bourbon and... Uh, and so and then we mm. reduced the stock down. Yeah. So it became oh, sticky when we put it on. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of quite American feel to it, which yeah. worked well, really well. Like, yeah, really do, we, do we say something for you guys? Oh, well, <laughs> if you have noticed, we both have been so like a bleary eye and a bit hung over. So all this talk of food, I'm literally just like, yes, thank you, God. Um, yeah, we'll and then, sure then we also did a belly, which uh, again the belly was basically cooked in cider and um, uh, oh, sage and garlic. garlic yeah. And that's basically yeah. through the oven and caramelised on top, so all of the fat starts caramelising. Yeah. So we did yeah. all that. Quite and then today we're doing the opposite way around. Today we've got 150 kilo <laughs> plus monster raw ball yeah. right now. Um, it's a beast. It's a beast, yeah. We, um, we saw it hanging in the chiller. It basically yeah. touches the floor and the ceiling. Yeah. 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 We, we, we know it's 150 kilo plus because the winch is rated at 125 kilos and it was going. So it's big. It's yeah. big. We also we need to thank the people and um, the refrigeration guys yeah. actually. Yeah. They've been fantastic. Angel yeah. and Fishers. You know, I mean, I yeah. both of them. And we've got uh, some Angel. Um, refrigeration, yes. basically Huntsman Game Gardens, which we've been hanging some of the carcass in, and Fishers, obviously, who do the, the big modular um, yeah. things on there. Those guys are basically both been brilliant by basically having the carcasses in there. I mean, so, we'd have to say to people, look, go and have a look at yeah. the carcass, yeah, yeah. open it up, and, and actually see it being used. And I think mm. they really have been really helpful. Yeah. It makes yeah, such yeah. a difference because we can That's show much more when we've got proper refrigeration. You've got everything there, yeah. you can say we've got the, you know, the yeah. knives there yeah. that we use, we've got the fridges there that we use. Yeah, we've been using the, the, the knives. knives and the, yeah. the Huntsman Game Larder is sort of our British system. Yeah, I, I, I designed that fridge yeah. with Angel Refrigeration yeah. when we, um, when I first wrote medicine. So basically, the Judy was working with us at the college, and I sort of took to one side and I said, "Look, this would be a really great idea." Yeah. We started talking about it, and then the actual engineering of the of the unit itself was already there. Mm. It's a case of basically looking at how to hang it, and then also yeah. looking at the effects of hanging. So I did a load of testing. And we found it worked phenomenally well. You know, it was already there in place. It wasn't anything needed to be done apart from the, the hanging structure of it. So yeah. th those deer, they're, they're really for individual stalkers. Yeah. They'll take like four row, yeah. it'll take six and one jack, and it'll take two fallow yeah. with heads off. I mean, I've had two 60 kilo fallow carcasses in there. Oh, wow. um, and the actual picture shows. They're very compact. I mean, yeah. you don't think that they'll be able to take yeah. that, but yeah. 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 Julie's brilliant. I mean, she's yeah. absolutely brilliant. Well, that's, that's the best size. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the problem is with refrigeration, a lot of people don't understand is that I know a lot of stalkers have got Coca Cola fridges and stuff like that. Yeah. that in. And the problem yeah. is with these fridges is that they, they hold a lot of moisture inside the fridge. So, what happens is that moisture is no good for the carcass. You know, you need to have something that basically has a fan that dries the inside out. And uh, I know that I can put my carcass into my game, my custom game larder, and it can be there for anything up to two weeks without any ill effects to the actual carcass whatsoever. Yeah. Whereas with a cocoa fridge or anything like that that's not meant for it, the, it's a time bomb, you know, the yeah. top starts ticking and you've yeah. got to get that thing broken down and basically frozen. And it, it really, there's, there's lots of, yeah, even when you're basically putting a carcass into there, you've got to set the fridge and, and load so it. So it done slowly. slowly. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you walk into a fridge or if you walk outside and it's cold and you're not wearing a jacket, you go, well, that, you know, it's, there's, a, there's a reaction to you. Well, the meat does exactly the same thing when yeah. you're into a fridge. And that's why you've got to gradually. I've never thought about it like that. Yeah, yeah it is. It's, 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 when you, it's never ever no. cooked meat straight from the fridge. Yeah. Yeah. You need to bring it up to temperature because the muscles so are cold and yeah. tight. Yeah. And you want them to be relaxed when you, yeah. put them, when you start cooking them. And, and, you like really and that will make the meat a lot tender. You yeah. say, I think in the book, you need to bring the carcass back and hang it 
outside of the chiller for what? In the winter, hour? yeah. In the winter, basically, like, hang it half an hour, let it cool down, yeah. then go into, it goes into the chiller. Normally, I set my chiller around about seven or eight seven, degrees. Seven, eight, yeah. yeah, and then leave it for a few hours in there, mm. and then probably I'll take it down to five degrees, leave it overnight, mm. and then I'll take it down to one degree, or one degree, I'll hold it, and it'll hold perfectly one, one degree. degree mm. yeah. One degree, the, if you leave the jacket on, the inside of the carcass, even after about two weeks, you'll touch it, and it'll be completely dry. Wow. And all the apples are continue to dry out, but when you come to skin the carcass, it'll be perfectly clean. It'll need to be one degree because don't forget you've got the skin on, so it acts as an insulation. So you need the inside, you know, otherwise, if you had it higher, it wouldn't be inside. A lot of people don't realise as well is that if your fridge is set at one degree, mm. if you take the temperature of the carcass once it's been in there a few days and stuff, the temperature of the carcass will always be a few degrees higher. Yeah. And there's there's another, another reason insulation. for that happening is insulation, but also as the carcass gets older, the bacteria within the carcass basically starts to break down the muscle and then that creates friction which creates yeah. heat. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I feel like we could sit here yeah. for hours we talking could. about this. But you know what, it's we have to say how good this talking show is, don't we? We, we haven't done know, that. Yeah. No. Because that's the most important thing, the fact that David and Diane have this vision. Oh yeah. You know, and David, they're very good, they've done lots of shows, so they're actual, what's so good about them is they actually know how to put a show on. Now they've done car, yeah. classic car shows, they do, they've done everything, but they have the experience yeah. and they have the knowledge. And yeah. I think that has really yeah. shown the kind of quality yeah. of the people that come here it's, and the whole thing. Feel of it as well. Yeah. Friendly. It's, it's friendly. It's, 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 that's what yeah. yeah. like yeah. yeah. like, yeah. it, it doesn't feel like some shows that I could name where you go and sort of you're like, oh, I don't know, this feels a bit yeah. uncomfortable. You come here, everyone's happy, smiley, friendly. The dogs feels, are running around. Yeah. It feels like one yeah. big team. Yeah. Like, exactly. I think that's amazing. It's a real yeah. family. It's a stalking yeah. show family, isn't it? And, yeah. and I think that is part of David and Anne's character and yeah. the people they have around them. Yeah. They have some really phenomenal people that work for them as well. Mm. So, yeah. um, you know, the team of girls who come from Ireland, mm. the lovely girls at the front, you know, they've, got, they've built over the years from doing shows all these amazing relationships with people. Yeah. And it really shows, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. lovely. Yeah. Long may it continue. I mean, yeah. uh, it, and hopefully yeah. it grow and grow. Yeah. I mean, because it's a great, great, great show. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was just out there, and David somebody came over. One of the store hosts just came over today and said, "It's been so good, so good." I just, I, I want a bigger space next year. And he said, ha, "Yep, that's great, but <laughs> <laughs> call, call me next week." Yeah. Yeah. Calm down. And he, and he just said that everybody is you know, literally taking even the, the startups this year are yeah. going and, and saying, "We need a bigger space next year." Yeah. And, He's, I know he's made a commitment to the showground, so hope you know, and I think that's phenomenal that he had the, the not, you know, the full sense, the, the, the sense to actually do that. The, yeah, yeah. And I really, I, I, I yeah. really wish them, and I want to be part of it. And Jose, so do I, yeah. so we had David on the podcast before we obviously came. He was talking about the ambitions of the future and potentially taking yeah. this to Europe and other places around the, yeah. around the world, and you know. He, ha he has a vision. They yeah. both have a vision yeah. and they're hard working, great, awesome. you know, yeah. and they get on with it. Yeah. And, and I think that shows in yeah. the style and the feel of the show. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Well, what so, right. an amazing note to end it on because I mean, I'm conscious you both got to go and break down some enormous oh, pig oh, yeah. in there, and we're, we've already <laughs> taken up a huge amount of your time. Um, yeah. But thank you both very, very much for so many uh, different things. I mean, Especially, you say everyone you put us in contact with. No, 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 I'm grateful for coming in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, say I, I really thoroughly love what you guys do. I love this I love podcast. It, yeah. I, I think it's one of those things, like I said to David when I told him about you guys, I said, look, it's one of those things that most of us will go out stalking the stupid cock in the morning, right? We'll get into the car and there'll yeah. be sort of like the shipping forecast <laughs> that we all listen to. Yeah. I think instead of having that, right, put this on and just listen to it as you're driving to the other place that you're going to go stalking. Yeah. And it sets you in the right mindset for what we yeah. do, you know, yeah. to getting out there into the countryside and basically harvesting some great quality medicine or wobble, yeah. um, you know, into it. And it, it, it's just great. And yeah, thanks for having us again. Um, yeah. Hopefully, We'll get to you another one soon. So nice to you. Hopefully, you might do something on uh, from my side of it. I'd like well, to do yeah. something on uh, medicine cookery and some of the historical dishes that perhaps have shaped well, the way we eat, uh, yeah, get, um, eat, eat medicine. Yeah. Rachel very kindly has potentially agreed to come on the yeah. podcast at some point. So I'd love to. Keep you yeah. right. And you're now committed to it live. Yeah. You've got you on. I'll make you on order. You can't back out now. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm going to hold you to it. Yeah. Right. 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 And just to say that it is, you know, it, 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 I, I really, really admire what you all do and, you know, the fact that we have to make, 
you have to get people to eat more venison. Yeah, and I think absolutely. that's, you know, that's yeah. one of our goals, isn't it, Jose? Definitely. And, and the understanding of it, really, and yeah. why you should eat more. Yeah, you guys are going to come and watch Steve Ball? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to cook some for you, okay? Oh, that's a, that's we'll be in the front row, too, right? Yeah, Great. good. Yeah. Good. Thank you so Thank much. You. Bye-bye.